the Grammy Awards over the weekend, last weekend. How many people watched the Grammy Awards? Yeah. I watched the Grammy Awards, and can I tell you something? Honestly, the promos for the Grammy Awards, first of all, are dopey. Because they all say things like, who will win the Grammy Award for best song? And honestly speaking, I don't think I care, and I don't think anyone cares. Unless they're in the recording industry. I mean, can you tell me who won best song last year? Best record? You know, best hip-hop artist. I'm talking last year specifically. And after you've watched all these different award shows like the MTV Video Music Awards and the American Music Awards and all the other shows that are on, I'll bet you can't even remember who wins these awards and you don't care. The reason I watch the Grammy Awards is not to see who wins the Grammy Award. In fact, frequently I fast-forward because I do use my DVR, I fast-forward right through the actual award. Couldn't care less. I watch to see the performances. You know, you do see some one-of-a-kind performances, and I watch to see those. It's just that simple. So, um, of course, I have no say over how they do this, but if I were them, I would not promote who is going to win the Grammy Award because who cares who's going to win the Grammy Award? What I care about is who's going to perform on the Grammy Awards <laughs> and will they show up, Rihanna? Will they show up? That's what I care about. Seriously. That's all I care about. Give me some entertainment. Another thing I fast forward through on the Grammy Awards, when the president of the Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences comes out there and starts giving his little speech, which always in there now contains some kind of a zinger about illegally downloading music. Goodbye. I go right through that. Don't you be scolding me. And don't you be telling me how many great charitable works you think the recording industry does. Couldn't care less. Skip right past that. I just want to get to the good stuff. Who's performing? Who's performing together? And um, I also want to know, while I'm talking about the Grammy Awards for a second, what did Stevie Wonder do to deserve having to perform his song Superstition with the Jonas Brothers? I mean, did he get a DUI or something? Is this uh, community service? Why did Stevie Wonder have to appear with the Jonas Brothers? Ugh. Lakes. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, having said all of that, there is something, and yes, it involves the Grammy Awards and other television programming. There is something about the Grammy Awards that I really, really annoy, and it, I find it very distracting. Now, the Grammy Awards is just the first place I noticed it. But now it happens on other shows as well. I will tell you that when I was once employed by um, a radio network that shall go unnamed, I was given tickets to see the Grammy Awards at Sable Center, and I went. In fact, I went a few times. And a few years ago, when I went to the Grammy Awards at Sable Center, well, let me just say first that going to the uh, Grammy Awards is not as interesting as you think. Unless you're in a suite. Unless you are um, sitting down there with all the people who are going to parties afterwards, what have you, which I wasn't. I'm just an onlooker. I don't work in the recording industry. I'm an interloper. And there's a certain number of you at Staples Center who are not in the recording industry sitting up in the stands. And uh, there are no concession stands open. You can't get a drink. You can't get a Pepsi. You can't get food. And during the commercial breaks of the show, they turn most of the lights off. There is very little sound or anything to keep you entertained during the breaks. But there was one thing going on during a break that I noticed. Have you noticed now the first six rows or eight rows of programs on television? 
and the Grammy Awards are one of these, where there are performances by, it could be comedians, or it usually is music acts. Have you noticed that they, they have people up there who are just amazingly enthusiastic about the performance? Have you noticed that? And they all tend to, like, train seals or synchronized swimmers. They're all up there waving their arms in unison or point. They are pointing, the pointing thing. It used to be just Neil Diamond did the pointing thing. And now you've got people in the quote-unquote audience doing the pointing thing. Well, they all light candles or they all light, uh, you know, these little lights at the same time and hold them up at the same time. Now, they do it at the Grammy Awards. And they do it at the Super Bowl. It's clear, okay? I mean, just think about it. The Super Bowl, in order to get in, you've got to go through metal detectors. They've got people uh, going through your purse. They're going through your uh, knapsack. There's all these security procedures to get into the Super Bowl. Do you really believe that as when Bruce Springsteen appeared at the Super Bowl a couple of weeks ago, do you really believe? That they just let a bunch of people run on the field like that and stand up there next to Bruce Springsteen? D do you really believe that? I don't. I believe this is a fake audience. It's a faux audience. Now, here's what I don't know about this audience. Are they paid? Are they hired by central casting? I don't know. They certainly seem to be demographically correct, like they're the right age group that you're looking to appeal to. They are people who look like fans of whatever band is up there. But I find it particularly distracting at the Grammy Awards. And, and before I tell you why it's distracting, let me remind you that what I noticed at the Grammy Awards during one of the breaks was that there was somebody, a director, a choreographer, who was it? There was somebody up there, and you could hear them giving directions to the people in the first six to eight rows. Directions on how to sit, how to stand, when to stand, how to sway their arms in rhythm with the music. And so they just look like a bunch of trained seals out there. In fact, you will also notice, how can you tell the faux or fake audience, the one that's been rehearsed, how can you tell it's them? There's actually a wall of separation, a moat, if you will, between the real audience and and the fake audience. There was one in the Grammy Awards last night. Uh, that fake audience, for half of the acts that appeared, actually was sitting behind the performers, facing the cameras, and swaying and jumping up and down. And one way you can tell it's this faux audience is that, number one, they like every style of music equally. They like every performer equally. Are you kidding? Uh, uh, rock? Love it. Rap, they love that too. Country, they're digging it. Gospel, classical, Yo-Yo Ma goes up there, they're in. They love every performer, and they are paying rapt attention. Now, you know if you've ever gone to a concert. People aren't paying rapt attention all the time. They're going up and buying drinks. They're walking around. They're going to the bathroom. And most importantly nowadays, people are constantly on the phone. They're talking on the phone, they're sending text messages and what have you. If you're at the concert, it's pretty annoying. But now what I'm finding more annoying is seeing these fakers, these actors, if you will, who are pretending to be a real audience, fawning over every act that comes out there. And you can tell they're fake, not only because they all love everything and they sway in time with the music, but none of them are on the cell phone. Ever. Have you ever noticed this? These people are never on the cell phone. They are never calling, hey, Ma, guess what? I'm on TV right now. See me? I'm at Staples Center. Look at me. Look at me. Every time I watch a game, like a baseball game on ESPN, and the camera showing the people behind home plate, even the Dodger game in L.A., there's always some moron, some yutz back there. Who is on the cell phone? Yeah, that's me. Look, hey, right there. There I am. See, it's me. There's always one. And usually many. The trained seals who appear as the fake audience at the Grammy Awards, they're never on the phone. They're never texting anybody. They're never talking to each other. 
They're never leaving to go to the bathroom. They're always there. And they love every style of music equally. Fake, fake, fake. And it looks fake. It looks fake. And it is now starting to grind on me. Other places I've seen the fake audience include, obviously, the Super Bowl and whatever's happening at halftime. Uh, the Jay Leno uh, concert performances, when uh, they do the Tonight Show and they, they, they do that same thing that Jimmy Kimmel does. By the way, it's on the Kimmel Show as well, where they go outdoors into a parking lot or something and they set up a temporary stage to put some rock act out there. It's usually sponsored by a car company. And then you've got the train seals out there waving and, you know, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and they're, they're uh, clapping their flippers or whatever they're doing out there. And they, um, they all look clean cut too. You don't see any stoners. Nobody's ever throwing up. Nobody's ever jumping on stage to try to dance with the performers or, uh, they're never getting up on stage to do things that yet. Yeah, you go to a concert and inappropriate things happen. And I'm not talking about women taking their tops off, which, which is another thing that happens. But when you go to a concert, you know, people get up on stage and want to meet the performer and they have to be dragged away by security. People spill their drink on the stage. You know, people getting thrown out by security all the time. And these people are so well behaved, so clean cut, so perfect. And you saw them on the MTV Video Music Awards and you see them everywhere now. Now, I'm sure the people in the TV business are doing this for a reason. Let me tell you the reason. The reason is because they don't want to have security risks. They want to have uh, no incidents. Uh, they also want to have everybody be demographically perfect. They don't want to have people who are 75 years old and up there in a wheelchair or people who are out of the target demographic appearing up there. So it is my belief that they cast these things the way you cast a TV show, a movie, or a play. I don't know for sure, but I know there have got to be people out there who've been one of these train seals. But not only do I want to talk to them, I want to talk to people who are, are annoyed by this or who have noticed it or who have wondered about it. Because for me, it is now distracting me. And I would rather see the real moron out there texting and talking to his friends and high-fiving and people body surfing than to see the train seals out there doing their synchronized swimming act. Am I the only one who cares about this? 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials, and more telephone calls than we've ever taken. Even you can get in at one 800 800 tom just like Allison just did. Allison, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. You are um, rather astutely describing a process that is managed by at least one company that I know of called SeatFiller.com. And it is essentially a you know an open call, an open casting call for these kinds of programs. So this is a job. These people are not doing this for free. They're not groupies. Oh, they're, de or... they're definitely doing it free. They're doing I mean, it free. You, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's a bunch of, you know, 16 to 25-year-olds that are like, oh, my God, you know, here's my chance to go to the Grammys or the AMAs or the, you know, the movie awards or what have you for free without having to buy a ticket. Um, you know, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second. Now, yeah. Brett, <laughs> Brett, you have different information. Tell Allison yeah, what you were going to uh, tell me. For instance, the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show pays around 8 to $10 per hour, cause, and you'll sit through several shows. That's um, a That's a different process. Uh, definitely a different company. All right. So cool. some of them do pay. Right. But because honestly, the who would want to do? Are. Who would want? I. It is my understanding from someone who attended the Grammy Awards yesterday uh -huh. that the group of seals, the trained seals, mm -hmm. they were there at three p.m. Mm -hmm. rehearsing. You you know why Tom to get on TV you know to see somebody famous to uh, you know whatever. Oh, but wait <laughs> there are people that actually go out to make some cash from this. Yeah, at the talk shows, I did work at a talk show once, and that was that you did pay some people to sit in that audience. Different company. 
So let me understand this. Is it a difference of the companies, or is it the one-off events like the Super Bowl and the uh, the Grammy Awards don't pay, and then the talk shows do pay? How does this work? I have a well, feeling that the new talk shows usually. <laughs> So, so the talk shows pay the train seats. Right, yes. I, I believe they're two separate companies that um, specialize in those different markets. Uh, now, let me ask both of you while well, I've got both of you on the phone. You're a viewer of TV shows. You're watching. Doesn't this annoy you to watch? I mean, <laughs> to see all these fake people in the fake audience? Well, once you know, it just it's all ruined. Uh, you know, I will say that some of them, they're not necessarily fake in that a lot of the people that are signing up for these um, programs, you know, it's it's basically a concert for them. So there may be somebody that's, you know, signing up with this company that absolutely loves you, too. And but they have to dress a certain way. They have to be in a certain demographic. Right. And they, have, they are choreographed to move in a certain direction at the certain time upon someone's direction. Sometimes, yes. Um, one thing that you didn't mention, though, is that not only are they in these audiences, you know, that are in front of the stage and all that, but they're actually, um, you know, as the name you know, the company implies, seat filler, they're actually filling in seats in the audience, too. So you'll notice that, um, you know, during intermission, they may move Justin Timberlake up to the front row, you know, because he's about to possibly receive an award, and the next second he'll be gone, and there'll be a 16-year-old good-looking girl there, you know, in his place. So they're moving people around all the time, and that's part of this company as well. And they're not paying those people either? No. <laughs> really? Yeah. Brett, Brett, how do you feel about seeing the fake audience on TV? Well, it, it honestly ruins you. Once you get into the industry, industry, it, it ruins a lot of things for you. The, uh, the veil is basically taken off your, off your face. Is you used to enjoy these TV shows and these movies, and then all of a sudden you found out the inner workings, and it's hard to watch TV now because of this stuff. I mean, uh, when you watch a concert and you've got all these people just, oh, they're enthralled. They just can't believe how good this stuff is. And a lot of those people, and some of these people are, you know, background extras that want to get their face on TV so they can, you know, they can get their face around there and have it recognized. They put it on their so, reel and they send it out with their resume? Exactly. It's just pathetic. because... Just because but, somebody has an alternate motive doesn't mean that they're not genuinely excited to be there. Yeah, but come on. You can't tell me, as I saw in the Grammy Awards this week, you cannot tell me that everybody there is equally enthralled watching <laughs> Carrie Underwood, whose unfortunate initials for a woman are CU. <laughs> and um, I, I would hate to think that she would ever marry up uh, with somebody who would play in her band with initials NT. That would be That's really okay. unfortunate. I agree. Uh, <laughs> I was noticing because it said CU on her drum set. I'm like, oh my God, no. All right, but they, they were equally enthralled with watching Carrie Underwood as watching T.I. Now, come on. There, there's not one person in the world who likes watching both those acts. No, they're not really. I don't know. I, I guess I just I just have to disagree because I mean um, there's, you probably notice there's a lot of girls there, so they may just be out you know at night with their friends the same way they would be equally as excited to go to some bar in Hollywood. You know what I but mean? But come on, but then, but the point is, look, I, I, it distracts me because I <laughs> don't believe that anyone likes every one of these acts that performed. So what would make you believe if they were crowd surfing? <laughs> no, I well, well, but put it this way, they would look real if they were texting. Uh, if they were on the telephone, don't you think it's natural for somebody to pick up the phone and go, I'm on TV right now. That's me over there. And then start waving into the camera. These people are focused like a laser beam on everything that's happening. And they mm -hmm. approve of everything. Well, they, yes, they well, are. Because you know it's the same demographic of country yeah. and rap listeners. So, Right. Or, that's you know, cool. I, I think one year Yo-Yo Ma was on there and these people were just in <laughs> And Gotta be kidding! Don't know who Yo Yo Ma is, uh, and, and, and and obviously they just want to be sitting there, so they'll they'll look enthralled at whatever walks up on the stage. For God's sake, it's outrageous! Uh, guys, thank you for the calls. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Lisette on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Yes, I've been a seat filler before. Uh, a few times, uh, one of those including them to the awards show, and um, I wasn't paid, and it was a lot of fun. I just really wanted to go, and that was the way to go. 
you know, and not have to pay or have to win a contest. So. Now, when you were a seat filler at the MTV Video Music Awards, what did you have to do? Well, you have to get there really early, so about three hours beforehand. And um, you're basically just waiting the whole time. There's not a lot of instruction. Um, and we're in the front rows because we're also filling the seats for, um, like, the performers that need to go to the restroom and can't, can't get back in on time besides um, being up there for the performances. So, um, and I just, I love all types of music. So, you know, if when I have the time, I love to do it. Let me ask you a question. Do they they do they pay you for that? No, it's uh, it's free. You don't get paid. So you're basically right. just doing it because you love, you know, the idea of going and seeing these people perform. And they don't tell you what to do? Uh, no, not really. Do they um, tell you what to wear? Yes, yes. They tell you to dress um, formal for certain shows or trendy. And you do have to be between, you know, a certain age group and... Um, and even though, even though you're not being paid for it, you do have to send in your headshots, and they have to approve the way that you look. <laughs> <laughs> and and you were not choreographed ever. No, not really. No, I mean, I know. I, Don't you, know, you find it interesting that these people are all making the same movements at the same time? Well, yeah, I've never had to do that. We, you know, we've just been told like go up there by the stage and just have fun, and you know. And uh, I've I've almost waved one time when I saw myself. I was <laughs> trying not to, but do they you know. tell you not to do that? Yeah, yeah. But you see, a real person would do that. Of course, yes. And that's only natural. And by the way, isn't it interesting how they don't want you waving on a show like that? But then they have shows like the Today Show and the Early Show and Good Morning America with all these morons who wave continuously for the entire four <laughs> hours of the show. Right, right. Well, I mean, you wouldn't expect people like that to... Oh, I guess the people... Um, yeah, they're in the back. The people who are regular people, you would say. So I guess all that's going on back there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Lisette, thank you for the call. I appreciate Tom it. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Yes, yes, yes. There are fewer commercial breaks. Get a stopwatch out for God's sake. Fewer commercials. And of course, more of your telephone calls at 1 800 5800 Tom. We're talking about those train seals you now see very commonly on television in the front rows of concerts, or what appear to be concerts, concert performances, music performances. Rick Riley on the ESPN.com website, he. Uh, he uh, became an audience member for the Bruce Springsteen halftime show at the Super Bowl. And here's what he says. Let me give you some advice. Don't be one. You know how sometimes you have an idea that will be hilarious and clever, but it ends up worse than being trapped under Kevin James in a Finnish sauna? This is one of those ideas. You'll be 10 feet from Bruce Springsteen, I said to myself. You'll find out who all those people are who we see every year. The game's going to be a blowout anyway. What do you miss? So he said, I did it. Turns out those fans are real people, about 2,000 of them. They're local teachers, nurses, and students willing to rehearse for two 10-hour days and then show up at noon for a 6 p.m. football game, of which they'll get to see none of. Most answered an online ad from the halftime show's producers that read in part, we're looking for enthusiastic volunteers to be part of the on-field audience. What the 2000 found out is the on-field audience doesn't get paid. They don't get a ticket to watch the game. They don't even get a T-shirt. They can't bring cameras or cell phones unless they're a group leader. They'll be bussed in and bussed out. They will be on the field for 12 minutes, and they'll have to sign a release that they won't sue in case they're flattened by a forklift. Sign me up! 
He says, I didn't even think of the idea until after the two rehearsals had happened. Thank God. On Thursday, we stood in the rain for eight straight hours, one woman complained. I joined group U, the letter U. About 300 people outside the stadium with a quarter to play in the first half. Our leader was a terminally perky blonde named Cynthia who kept chirping at us, keep together and energy up. She told one woman, no, you can't go pee. I haven't peed all day. Volunteers were expected to, quote, be able to run the length of a football field twice. But I met people who couldn't have run the length of a football twice. One woman from Lakeland, Florida, was 61 years old and looked to be built along the lines of a good-time hamburger state. If she was running, it was going to be Thunder Road. I've been practically, uh, I've been practicing running up and down my street, she said proudly. Really, I asked. No, she laughed. Not really. One guy had been to 97 Springsteen shows and wasn't about to miss this one. One young woman was there to get a rich husband. I want a senator or a football player, she said. And all of us were in the tunnel, waiting for our moment, when we heard one of the craziest sustained roars I've ever heard in a stadium. Had to be 15 to 20 seconds. Turned out, we'd missed the most exciting Super Bowl play in history. Pittsburgh linebacker James Harrison's 100-yard, no-time-left interception return for a touchdown. The game-turning moment. Hey, what'll you miss? Suddenly, Cynthia hollered, everybody run! But we couldn't. There were so many cables, cameras, and photographers on the field that it was sort of like trying to jog through a TSA checkpoint. When they finally stopped us for good right on the 50, a woman to next to me grumbled, we were way closer in rehearsal. Still, suddenly, there he was, standing 40 feet in front of us, Bruce Springsteen, buffed and real and smiling at me and my fellow fans. And I thought, with this start, it's when this starts, it's going to be awesome. And that's when I realized it already had started. I realized it because I saw thousands of fists pumping rhythmically all around me. But for the life of me, I couldn't hear a damn thing. You can hear him, I said to one rhythmic fist pumper. No, he yelled. How do you know what he's singing? Rehearsals, he yelled. Oh, you could hear better in rehearsals. No, he yelled. Worse. Turns out the field for a Super Bowl halftime is audio nowhere. Springsteen unplugged. All the speakers are set in front of the paying customers in the seats, leaving you at a Marcel Marceau concert. A friend of mine in the stand said she could hear Bruce perfectly. Then she added, and what about that amazing play at the end of the half? Yes, unforgettable. And it goes on. That's Rick Riley of ESPN.com. And I'm really, really annoyed by this uh, as a viewer on TV, seeing all of these people out there who are, uh, you know, a fa they're a faux audience. They're a fake audience. I don't like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Amber on the Tom Likas show. Uh, hello, Amber. Uh, it's Tom Likas, uh, your genial host. Hi, Tom. Um, I actually did this. Um, I was a fan, and they sent out um, an email to the fan website for Weezer, and I went and saw them play on the Jimmy Kimmel Summer Series. And a lot of them are radio contest winners or fans that have been contacted by the website. And the reason you don't see them with cell phones is because they take everything away from you before you walk into the, to the venue. But well, that's the point I'm making to you. If they were a real audience, they would have cell phones. They would have cell phone cameras. They would be text messaging. A real audience would be doing that. True, but then it takes away from the performance. I don't know. I enjoyed it. Well, at a real concert, I... you don't have... Wait a minute. At a real concert, you don't have these train seals. You only have that on television. Well, they didn't tell us to do anything like, oh, wave your arms or anything like that. You could do whatever you wanted to, and... You were just there to perf watch it. What if you wanted to call your friend and say, guess what, I'm on TV right now? Could you do that? Well, that's, well it's taped, so you can do it later. Jimmy Kimmel is live on the East Coast, darling. I don't know if you know, it's well, the show's the called Coast, I, Jimmy Kimmel Live. I don't have any friends on the East Coast, so all my friends have to watch me on the West Coast. So you wouldn't want to call your friends and go, I'm just three rows from Weezer! Uh, 
They all knew because they were there with me. <laughs> what? I don't know. I had fun. and then It doesn't look natural. It looks stupid. Well, afterwards, they played a free show, and we got to watch, and it was fun. I... I know it looks stupid on TV, but they're not they are not actors. They're well, the result is I'm, I'm getting annoyed about watching music on TV because I don't like watching these fakes, the full audience uh, that, 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 that perform like trained seals. I don't like watching them in the front row. I don't like it. Well, uh, some of them are fans, and some of them are legitimately enjoying it. I was legitimately enjoying it. And I, I would watch Carrie Underwood. We're not talking about you being there and getting a free look at Weezer. We're talking about the viewer at home. Well, then they don't have to watch it on TV. I mean, next time when they, uh, you know, when they bring Blink One Eighty Two back next year, and they're appearing there, and you're watching at home, and you're not down there watching them in person, are you going to enjoy watching the fake audience cheering on Blink One Eighty Two? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. It so you gives, like the fake audience. It gives the band excitement, and it, it lets them know that even if it is a fake audience, that they're, they're, they're feeling... Well, why, the, why should there be excitement if, if maybe the band's giving a lousy performance? Maybe they're off that day. Why should they get all these people cheering wildly? I don't get it. Well, I mean, you're recording it on TV, too. They Do, do you like laugh TV. tracks on sitcoms also? No, not really. Why not? Takes away from the enjoyment of the show. The same thing. I guess you're right. I I don't know. I personally enjoy it, and that's just me. Unbelievable! You're killing me. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom like is show. It's. Tom like his show. Now heard six days a week. Of course, every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. now. Every Saturday, 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you can't be in Southern California to hear 97.1 FM Talk, you can also hear us at blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 p.m. any Saturday. Or, in fact, any day, Monday through Friday, 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home as well. And there will be the Tom Likas Show now six days a week. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about those faux audiences now that are popping up on TV shows anytime a band appears. Don't you find that annoying? It's Derek on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Yes. Um, I actually attended uh, Jimmy Kimmel a couple of times, like three times, and I pretty much used it as an excuse to go see a free concert. But are you rehearsed? Are you told what to do? Are you paid? Uh, How does it work? Well, well, we're rushed in like pretty much like cattle, and they strip us down of everything, and they shove you into a, uh, a crowd, and this bald guy, I guess the hype guy for the show, just runs out, and he yells at you, tells you, raise your arms up, and energy's up, and you're going to be on TV, like they pitch you like that, so you do end up feeling like a trained chimp. But, I mean, I kind of put up with that deep digging in the studio just free. Right, I understand that, uh, but uh, again, I, I understand why you would have the motivation to be one of them. Yeah. What, I, what I'm asking is, how do you feel about seeing it on television when it's somebody else doing it? Uh, it it's pretty annoying, yeah. I, I don't really like it. I tend not to really participate, so I don't know if I'll be hearing back from them. I kind of sit in the back and just I'm there to really just watch the show, but they are pretty annoying. The weirdest part is on the Grammy Awards when they make it really obvious who the fakes are by separating them from the real audience. It's irritating, yeah. They they, they look like models. Like, I don't want, you know, what's up with that? I agree with you. Beth on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi, it's nice to talk to you. Um, I I just wanted to let you know that um, I was comped some tickets about four years ago to the Grammys. And I know why they have to put those people there is because that show is so boring and tedious when you're actually there that if you had people like me in the audience sitting there watching it, it would look like everybody was bored and had a headache and just wanted to get out. So they have to put people on there that look like they're having fun because it was the most boring thing I've ever gone to. And I mean, and there were some artists, you know, that I liked and everything, but for the most part, it was just, it was horrible. Now, I, let me, let me, in fact, you bring up something uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you, you ever see those promos in advance of the Grammys? They'll have, uh, you know, Queen Fatifa or somebody saying, 
Yes, I said Fatifa. Yes. <laughs> uh, Queen Fatifa, she'll be saying, who will win the Grammy for best record? First of all, are they making records anymore? I haven't seen one in a while. But also, <laughs> I mean, do you really know or care who won the Grammys last night? Oh, no. No, and I didn't, you know, I, I, I only enjoy, enjoyed maybe a fifth of it, maybe, if that much. And like I said, if somebody were to cop me some tickets again, I would give them away. I would not even go. And it's just, it's such a long process, and, and it's a bunch of fake people, and everybody's looking at everybody like, you, you know, are you somebody? Or you know, it's, it's just the most horrendous thing that I've ever been to. did not enjoy it at all. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate the call. It's Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? It's Brian. Going okay, son. Right on. Hey, uh, I had some comments about the, uh, the Grammys and whatever. I think th they've completely lost touch with the music about it. It's music anymore. It's about what celebrities are showing up and what are they wearing and... You know, it's who who cares what they're wearing? I mean, are you here to, to listen to and, and see Well, the real truth is or? nobody cares. No, no, no. The real truth is nobody cares who wins a Grammy Award except people in the record industry. Exactly. You I know, mean, the and, whole and purpose like, uh, of the like show the is it's an award show and nobody cares. Can you tell me who won Best Song last year? It, no, I couldn't tell you. you know, best honestly, Rap Artist? You know, I couldn't tell you which rap artist won what. You know, none of that, you know. For one, you know, I'm not even into the Grammys. I can honestly say that I do like, you know, mo a majority of whatever music they're talking about in the Grammys. But, you know, I don't care who's going to win what. It's like Smokey Robinson said, you know, they need to declassify it. You know, it doesn't need to be punk rock. It doesn't need to be metal. Why can't it just be rock and roll? Why can't it just be, you know, R&B? But it's got, you know, everything's different. Yeah, you know? I uh, totally agree with that. And, you know, like, like the last couple of callers, I, I got to go to a Jimmy Kimmel a while back, and I saw Slayer of all bands. And, really? you know, that's, you know, that's kind of wild. You know, you don't, you really wouldn't expect to see Slayer on a TV show or at, at an award show. But, you know, we got in there. I don't know what they're talking about. I went in with my, my phone, my, you know, my camera. I had, you know, a bag of pot. You know, we had a good time, you know. And those were real fans. You know, those kids were in there to see Slayer. Let yeah, me ask you a question. I, I, wait a minute. I, I, wait a minute. Wait, let me ask you a question. When you saw Slayer uh, on Kimmel, uh, uh -huh. were you watching inside the theater or were you out in a parking lot down the block? No, no, we we're we we're out we we're outside behind um, the the studio or wherever they film it, like El Capitan, I think it is. Right. And they have the 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 Pontiac Garage Live or whatever it is, and it's an outdoor stage. There was probably I don't know two hundred fifty people, three hundred people. You know, out there just thrashing the Slayer. You know, they're they're moshing. People are taking pictures with their phones. Hey, you know, we're seeing Slayer. You know, free Slayer show. So I wonder how they decide which bands need a fake audience. And people swaying and you know lighting lighters or <laughs> toy in unison, and which ones don't. I, I wonder how they decide that. Somebody must know. Josh on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm okay. Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks, Tom. Anyway, I was at the Grammys last night, and let me just give a word of advice: not worth the money, not worth the time. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You, what do you mean, not worth the money? I, I, I thought had to you had pay for tickets. It was who not did you free. pay for? T wait, who did you pay for? Not, not, I don't need their name, but I mean, who did you pay for tickets? You didn't get those tickets to the box office, did you? No. So basically, I have a buddy who's in the recording association, and um, he was able to get them. Um, and they were two hundred dollars, and they stuck. Wait, us. he got them. Wait, he got them, and he sold them to you. Did he pay anything no, for them? No, that was the face value of them. That was the face value. Face value. Oh, you could get tickets for like up to a thousand bucks. Really? Really? Yeah. Not that I would want to. I've been already. You sure? <laughs> oh no, no. I've been, and unless you're in a suite getting tanked with other people in the uh, in, oh. in show business, it's it's just not worth it. Listen to this. So you couldn't even get tanked in there because you couldn't buy food or wa food or. Well, drink. that's what I'm saying. If you're not sitting in a suite, yeah. Uh, they they close all the concession stands exactly. at Staples Center. So you so don't eat on camera. You can't get a Joni Maroni sausage. You can't nothing. get a, a, a hot dog. You can't get a Coke. You, nothing. nothing. And it takes four hours for the show to finish, and it's not worth it to watch the Joni. Like, and they like made Stevie Wonder look ridiculous last night performing with like a bunch of kids up there. It was not okay, Tom. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what Stevie Wonder did to deserve that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Did you see how they butchered the song? Oh, of course I saw they butchered the song. Butchered I mean, it. They probably never heard it until the first rehearsal. Yeah, it's true. Well, anyway, I just called to tell you I love your show, and basically all your listeners, don't waste your time on going to the Grammys. It's not worth it. All right, Josh, Can thank you? you for that. Let me get to Steve in here on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Um, hey. My sister-in-law... She's, like, on this list that they call every time, like, the Golden Globes come up, the Grammys, a couple other ones that she's mentioned before. But what she is is she's, like, a, a they call it, like, a, a seat filler. And she so, shows up, like, four hours before the event starts. And she stands out, at like, with a red carpet where they're all walking in to make it look like there's way more people out in the audience, you know, watching all the stars come up onto the uh, the red carpet. And then after that's done, then she goes inside and she sits in the first six rows, or actually like the first eight rows, and she's allowed to bring a date. And then she has told me that she's there to basically fill the seats, make them look like they're really busy, being extremely enthusiastic. And she's been doing this for so long that they've in invited her to actually come to like the after parties to make those look even more, like a lot busier and a lot more happening. Oh, my God. Kill her. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.